For this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some exercises that make use of the cast rule. And this is a fairly uh, simple, basic introduction to the cast rule or exercises using the cast rule. You can see I've got some exercises all ready to go here. First one says express the tan of 240 degrees in terms of the related acute angle. and then evaluate to four decimal places. So the idea behind this one is first we actually want to write the tan of 240 degrees is equal to, and we want to write that in terms of the related acute angle. So let's think about 240 degrees. So where would that be? Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. 240 degrees is going to be between 180 and and uh, 270. So here is my angle, 240 degrees. And we want to find the related acute angle, which is going to be here. So there's our related acute angle. And to calculate our related acute angle, we make use of the idea that if that's 240 degrees, well, from here to here, that's a straight line, so that would be 180 degrees. And so we know that 180 plus the related acute angle is 240. Or another way of saying that would be that the related acute angle is equal to 240 degrees minus 180 degrees. And that gives us a value of 60 degrees. So from that, I have, first of all, that I know that this tan of 240 degrees is going to be related to the tan of 60 degrees. And the question now becomes, is that going to be positive or negative? And so to figure that one out, we're actually going to have to make use of, not only do we have to figure out the related acute angle, but we're also going to make use of the cast rule. So... What does the cast rule say? Well, my angle is in quadrant 3. Tangent is positive in quadrant 3. And so I know that the tan of 240 degrees is the same as the positive tan of 60 degrees. You wouldn't normally write that plus sign, but I'm trying to be very explicit here about where that's coming from. And so I just go ahead... For now, we're still working with our calculators for these, so I'm just going to put in the tan of 60 degrees, and I end up with 1.7321, approximately equal to 1.7321. So the first part of this is to write this in terms of the related acute angle. The tan of 240 is positive tan of 60, and the second part of this is to actually write out the value, to evaluate the tan of 60 and then apply that positive or negative. Of course you could do this whole thing with your calculator and I would expect you to check it that way. So let's move on to the second one. I'll leave the first one visible there so we can refer to it if we want to. So the second one asks us to find the sine of 159 degrees. First of all in terms of the related acute angle. So let's see if I can make a slightly better use of space here and start off with my diagram. So let's figure out what the related acute angle is for this one. So 159 degrees, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. 159 is between 90 and 180. So my angle is there, 159 degrees. My related acute angle is going to be between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis, which in this case is the negative x-axis. So there's my related acute angle. And I can calculate that related acute angle by making use of the fact that this is a straight line from 0 to 180 degrees. So 159 degrees plus the related acute angle equals 180 or I'm just going to cut straight to the fact that the related acute angle is equal to 180 degrees minus 159 degrees. And so in that case, we have 21 degrees. So the first part that I'm going to be able to say about this is that the sine of 159 degrees is equal to something to do with the sine 
of 21 degrees. And now we have to use our cast rule to determine whether or not this is going to be positive or negative. That's how we remember our cast rule. And in this case, we are in the second quadrant and sine is positive. So in this case, it's the positive sine of 21 degrees. And so we go ahead to our calculator, put in the sine of 21 degrees. And I end up with 0 0.3584. So that's equal to positive, approximately, 0 0.3584. And again, we wouldn't normally write that positive, so we would just write it this way. And finally, last example along these lines. The cosine of 164 degrees in terms of the related acute angle. Cosine of 164 degrees. So let's start off with a quick little diagram. You don't need to do these diagrams, but I do find them to be helpful, especially when you're just getting started. 180 and 270 degrees. 164, once again, we're in quadrant two. There is our angle, 164 degrees. The related acute angle, the related acute angle between the terminal arm and the negative x-axis. We have a very similar calculation, which is, in this case, 164 degrees plus the related acute angle equals 180 degrees. which means the related acute angle is equal to 180 degrees minus 164 degrees. And that gives me a related acute angle of, in this case, 16 degrees. And finally, I have to consider the cast rule. I'm in quadrant 2 again, which means that sine would be positive, but I don't have sine, I have cosine. And so now I can write this as the cosine of 164 degrees is equal to, the cast rule tells me cosine is going to be negative in that quadrant, and the related acute angle is 16 degrees. So I have negative the cosine of 16 degrees, which is equal to negative, and the cosine of 16 degrees, if I check that on my calculator, cosine of 16 is equal to 0.9613. 0 0.9613, and that's now approximate, rounded to four decimal places. And of course, I would write this 9613. I would write it without the brackets. There we go. So I had two of them that were positive and one of them that was negative. And this is generally, this, these are the, the two simple steps you're going to take whenever you're doing a question dealing with these angles. Um, you're going to, first of all, you're going to look at the actual angle. A, a sketch, if you can do it in your head, then great, but if you can't do it consistently, I recommend using a sketch. And you're going to also record your cast rule there. Okay, let's take a look at another example so on page two. On page two, I have a couple of other questions. I say the coordinates of a point on the terminal, terminal arm of an angle theta are at negative 11, negative 4. So the x coordinate is at negative 11 and the y coordinate is at negative 4. Deter determine the exact primary ratios for theta. So what are the trig ratios for the angle theta? So again a quick little sketch of this is certainly going to be useful. And I take an x value of negative 11 and a y value of negative 4. So that means my terminal arm is down here in so there's my point, negative 11, negative 4, and I'm in quadrant 3. So that's already going to tell me something. The other thing we normally need, and I'll just remind you of the uh, definitions. Um, the definitions we use for sine, cosine, and tangent are the sine of theta is equal to the y coordinate divided by r, the cosine of theta is equal to the x coordinate divided by r and the tan of theta is equal to the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate.
So what are we missing here? We actually have the x and y coordinates. So I can actually go ahead and complete the tan of theta. And that's simply equal to the y coordinate, which is negative 4, over the x coordinate, which is negative 11. And that simplifies to 4 over 11. So that's the value for tan theta. So tan theta is equal to 4 over 11. That one is actually done. And that's an exact value. I didn't do any rounding here. So remember, we're finding exact values. The next one I want to find, sine or cosine. Both of them are going to involve r. r is the length of uh, the from the origin to the point. So essentially, it's the hypotenuse. Um, if I draw in, for example, if I draw this in as a little triangle, then this little triangle, if I put this whole triangle in in red, this triangle is a right angle triangle, and it's got a side length here of 4 and a side length here of 11. And so the hypotenuse we can find using the Pythagorean theorem. Don't need that reference to quadrant 3 right now. So using the Pythagorean theorem, what can I say? I can say that r squared is equal to 4 squared plus 11 squared. And that's equal to 16 plus 121. So r squared is equal to uh, 137. And I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Normally that would give me plus or minus the square root, but we know that we know that r is a distance. So r is greater than zero as a distance. So I only consider the positive square root. And so now that I know a value for r, I can actually write my value for sine theta is equal to the y coordinate, which is negative 4, divided by my r value, which is the square root of 137. And so I'll put a square around that to indicate that it's completed. And for this one, I'm just going to go down here, give myself a little bit more room. The cosine of theta is equal to the x value, which is negative 11, divided by the square root of 137. And notice that these are all exact values. So we have determined the exact primary trigonometric ratios. We're going to learn about other trigonometric ratios later on in the course, but for now we're just dealing with the primaries. Let's move on to what I've got marked here as, as number five. It says the terminal arm of the angle theta lies in quadrant two, and one of the primary trigonometric ratios is tan theta equals negative 10 over eight. So we're definitely going to make use of that. I'm just gonna, a little bit of spacing issues there with the PDF file. Tan theta is negative 10 over eight, which we might actually write as, we can simplify that, negative 5 over 4. So I'll start with that. And we're also told that the terminal arm lies in quadrant 2, and that's actually important. So let's go ahead and draw a diagram of this one. And on our diagram, we know that the angle theta is in quadrant 2. So if it's in quadrant 2, that actually tells us something interesting. Uh, and I'll just put these kind of as footnotes down to the side here. In quadrant 2, what can you tell me about the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate? And that's actually what we're interested in. So in quadrant 2, the x-coordinate, and what can we say here? If we take a look in quadrant 2, well, that means the x-coordinate must be negative. And what can we say about the y-coordinate? In quadrant 2, the y-coordinate is positive. And we're going to make use of that observation. Of course, there's an easier way I could have said this. I could have just said, in a much simpler form, I could have said that x is less than 0. And I could have said that y is greater than 0. So you could have represented that either way. So now that we know that, well, what does tan of theta actually tell us? Tan theta is equal to y over x. That's a, one of our definitions for, for the 
primary trigonometric ratios. So tan theta equals y over x. So how could I end up with negative 5 over 4? Well, there's only two ways that could have happened. I could have negative 5 divided by 4. So that's y equals negative 5, x equals positive 4. Or y is equal to 5. Oh, sorry, that's not what I meant to do. And x equals negative 4. It's either, it's either going to be a negative divided by a positive or a positive divided by a negative. It has to be one of those two. But because of this condition, we know the x-coordinate is negative and the y-coordinate is positive because we're in quadrant 2. So because of this condition, I can actually eliminate both of those, and I know that y is equal to 5 and x equals negative 4. So I'm going to keep those two. The only thing I need to find now is my r value. So what is my r value? How am I going to calculate that? Again, using the Pythagorean theorem. I'll do a different color triangle here than I've been using. So let me just go ahead and drop in a little right triangle here and let's consider this right triangle well in this case if x is negative 4 well that means the length of this is actually 4 if y is 5 the length of this is 5 and we can use that to find our our, our, our value using the Pythagorean theorem so from that we end up with r squared is equal to 4 squared plus 5 squared and that's equal to 16 plus 25, which is equal to, what do we have, 31, 41. Those are all r squareds. And I take the square root, but because I know that r is a distance, that's just equal to square root of 41. So because we're in quadrant 2, we've able, been able to figure this out. I already know what tangent is. So really, my value for tangent is complete. It's right here in a simplified form tan of theta is equal to negative 5 over 4. The sine of theta is the uh, y coordinate divided by r, which in this case gives us sine of theta. The y value we said was 5. We said y was positive over the r value, which is square root of 41. And that's now complete. And the cosine of theta is the x coordinate divided by r. So the cosine of theta is equal to, in this case we said that x had to be negative, so that's negative 4 over 41. And there we have the three primary trigonometric ratios. I want to highlight to you, and I'll use the highlighter to do it, I want to highlight to you that a big part of what we just did there, our answer was based on this idea of being in quadrant 2. If, if we were just given this information but without the quadrant 2 part, we would have to consider other quadrants for theta. And that's something we'll cover in a, uh, a later uh, question. So I think I've got that question here. Uh, no, sorry, my mistake. It doesn't look like I have it. So that's one I'll cover at a future date.